Well, hello, hello, my good friends, and welcome back to the RimWorld Gun Empire series. I am overjoyed that you could join me once again today, my friends, for our 10th episode into this series, where we are currently hauling in things from the raid last episode, as well as waiting on our caravan to make it all the way back to the main base. Speak of the devil, it would appear that they've made it. It's time for everyone to get a few good nights worth of shut-eye after hauling all their things in. Back at the brand new base, though, we have a lot of work to do today. Interestingly enough, though, before we really get started here, we actually have a trade caravan from the Oak Foundation. Now, my personal opinion, they don't really want to do any trading, and they're just more scouting out the area after we've captured this settlement. Bunch of nosy bastards, if you ask me. Now, if we expect this new base here to actually operate as something of a stronghold in the enemy territory in the Outlands, we're going to have to have some food, and we're going to have to have a place to store all of that food, so we immediately began working on a dining room, a kitchen, as well as food storage. Luckily, in terms of food, it would appear the mountain devils were actually growing some pear trees as well as a few other crops. We would also immediately begin deconstructing a lot of the wooden structures that they had built and that they were living in here, as well as removing a lot of the stone flooring, as those resources would be invaluable for what we planned on building here. Our next big construction project here at the new base was going to be some residential areas, so basically like some uh, cabins all connected for our mercy mercenaries, of course. I don't like the fact that they're built out of wood, but the resource here is just so abundant in the forest, I couldn't help myself. At one point, I noticed our mercenary Grefis was still lying in their bedroll, even though they should have been healed by now, so I took a look. Oh, shit. Yeah, they're missing both arms, both legs, and their left ear. I suppose I wouldn't want to get out of bed either. We'll try to build some bionics or prosthetics and send over later from the main base. It will be a little while though because we're actually devastatingly low on steel as well as components. So I'm actually going to load all the mercenaries up into the Wissant, which I have still yet to name, and we're actually going to be sending them out to the nearby mountains where they can set up some mining operations for a while. I will say I was pretty pleased with the area that we chose here as it was probably about 97% mountain and the rest of it was an open area. As you can see, there was a lot of mountain and we are going to try and dig through as much as humanly possible before we come home. It didn't take us very long at all to run into several different veins of steel, compacted machinery, coal, and even a little bit of jade. Back at the new base though, we actually ended up having two new lovers. It would appear that Otto has courted Jet by subtly complimenting her appearance. Oh, Otto, you sly devil. I even caught these two little lovebirds sharing a romantic breakfast before beginning their work for the day. How sweet. All right, that's enough. Get your asses back to work. One of the biggest things that I'm going to be trying to focus on here with the new base, since it is our stronghold, quote unquote, of course, is just defenses, basically. It doesn't have to be pretty, it just has to be functional and be able to protect our people inside, of course. I do obviously, though, want ease of access for any of the vehicles that we may be piloting, so of course I built a garage door at the front. I also remembered that we actually left the armadillo here instead of taking it back to the main base because it was so severely damaged. So looks like it's good to go now. I then decided for our current research project, I'd actually like to begin on transport pods because I thought that this would be an easy way for us to send resources and other things back to our stronghold base, right? Well, I didn't take into account that it's very far away, but that's something I figure out later. Besides, at the moment, we have much bigger fish to fry, like all these fish that are coming to try and slaughter us from the Confederacy of Bana. You know, from up here, it would appear that it's not only the Thromboian tribes people, it looks to be the Mountain Devils as well, some type of coalition. Nevertheless, among their ranks, I once again spot a familiar face with some new armor, apparently sporting a fancy new helmet as well as a combat shield. Oh, Commando Junior, our mountain shall become your tomb, just as it was your father's. Probably the worst part of all, these stupid bastards brought some attack dogs along with him. They're going to force me to kill a bunch of good boys. Very well, so be it. Because we had only just recently raided the Mountain Devils last episode, the only thing we had to fire at them right now was some tox shells, and we did end up landing one, but ultimately it didn't really matter, as they began attacking us before we could really start pounding them 
time with them. On the bright side, I guess it annoyed them a little bit, so that's a win. Nevertheless, they were coming straight for us, and normally a raid this size is nothing that we couldn't handle quite easily, to be honest with you, but because most of our mercenaries were out mining for steel and components, we were reduced to three. Valida, Mathis, and Shinichi would be expected to take down this entire raid all by themselves, of course with the help of our turrets, although the turrets were getting their asses smoked. Then the bastards even began using our own embrasures against us, a genius tactic. Even when heavily outgunned and outmanned, Shinichi would stand tall in the face of danger along with his mercenary compadres. As a show of defiance and inspiration, even Downs would come out in the rifle runner and begin trying to run several of them down. In doing so, the truck would become severely damaged, not only from hitting several of the enemy bodies, but also from several different volleys of gunfire, meaning that she would have to try to get out of there fast as she was losing fuel. Shinichi and the others would come to her rescue attacking one of the bastards that had her pinned down, giving her enough time to jump out of the truck and run inside to safety. But the wolves were pounding on our doors, thirsting for our blood, and by God, we were going to give it to them. We wouldn't make it easy on them. If these cowards wanted us, they'd have to come and get us. And occasionally, we'd pop out our heads, maybe shoot a couple in the old noggin and knock their brains out, such as Commando Jr. here. With their leader defeated, the other cowards would attempt to throw down their arms and leave, some of them even trying to dig through the doors in our base to try and escape somehow. I would have dealt with this, but I was a bit too preoccupied with Commando himself. Normally with most of our enemies, just like Commando's father, Commando Senior of course, we would just slaughter them right here right now, but he was still a young spry chicken with a moldable mind, so I decided that we would try to heal him as best we could, bring him into the prison, and begin recruiting him. We would also end up bringing another of the mountain devils in to do the same. He was a young fellow with a funny looking haircut, but we didn't mind. Such a devastating loss of life. For the Confederacy of Bana and the mountain devils, that is, we were victorious, baby. Although we did end up taking a severe ass whipping on our defenses as we have no turrets left, unfortunately. No big deal though, we can always rebuild them bigger and better. Speaking of which, we were attempting to put the finishing touches on our defenses offensive wall at our secondary base here, and uh, not too long after that we actually ended up completing it just as well we also completed transport pods. Finally, I thought to myself, we'll be able to begin sending resources very efficiently and very easily between our two colonies, and I already had something in mind that I wanted to send back to home base. The first thing that I wanted to test out in a transport pod wasn't much of a resource, but it was a person. Yes, indeed, I was going to send Grefis all the way back to the main base, that way we could try and install some prosthetics or something onto him. But as you probably already guessed, this was about the point that I realized that my plan had went to shit and we couldn't actually send transport pods between the two bases, at least not the standard transport pods. Oh well, I guess we'll have to take Grefis back to his bed for the time being. Come along with Papa, little one, back to your home. I apologize because I realize we're bouncing around from place to place quite a few times here, but uh, back at the mining operation here in the hills, we were actually beginning to haul some steel all the way back to the main base, uh, as yeah, unfortunately, even with this largest vehicle that we have, we could still only carry, I think, close to about 1,500 steel per trip, which just like with the rifle runner, that does mean that we're going to have to make quite a few trips, and that really, really sucks ass, but it's no big deal as we expected that we would have to make a few trips at the very least to carry all of it back. Eventually though, after doing so quite a few times, we had finally returned home with all of our steel. Even though steel was the majority of what we had collected from the mining trip, we also got some components, jade and coal. Now, the components and the steel were going Going to actually begin using very quickly on some prosthetic limbs for Grefis. But Rad Knight, I thought you just said that the transport pods couldn't reach between the two bases. Why would you even bother? Are you going to drive all the way there? Fear ye not, my friends. I have a plan. My plan includes building a transport pod back here at the main base and just shooting it basically as far out as it will go and we're actually going to have Jet at the secondary stronghold base come out to that area to try and pick them up. Whoo! 
Ooh, it's a lot of planning, I know. But just stick with me here. I know I'm all over the place, but we got this. Now, in the meantime, while we're waiting on Jet to arrive at the rendezvous point and pick up all of the prosthetics, I actually have a very special project in mind. We are once again going to be building a brand new vehicle. However, this one is not going to be anything like any of the vehicles that you've seen thus far. Nay, my friends, this one is very, very special. I suppose it could be described as a combat vehicle. Though, if I'm being honest with myself, I believe the term vehicle might be a teeny bit disingenuous, and a better term for this vehicle, quote-unquote, is a mech. Or possibly a mech suit, whichever you prefer. Essentially, it is a large, metallic, uh, humanoid-ish shell that we would wear and uh, basically go into combat with. It has a very large machine gun, a massive cannon, as well as a rocket launcher, which I will now demonstrate slightly. First up, we ended up using the machine gun, though it didn't exactly go to plan because I didn't fuel it all the way up. Just imagine a minigun that's pretty accurate essentially. And then we tried out the very large cannon as well as the rocket launcher, which is extremely destructive as you can see. Truthfully, in my honest opinion, I think that this mech may very well be the most valued tool slash weapon that we have at our disposal, other than the nuke of course. Finally though, several hours later, we were actually ready to send the prosthetics out to Jet for her to pick up and that way she can take them back and put onto Grefus. This was great for several reasons, obviously of course, because we wanted Grefus to be able to have those prosthetic limbs, that way they can be back in action once more, but also because this is the very first test of our new transport pod technology. And based on what I could tell, it all worked out perfectly. The prosthetics arrived basically exactly where I pointed to for the transport pod to actually drop and they were completely undamaged. Now the only thing left to do was for Jet to load them up into her pockets I suppose and take them home. Back at the HQ though, Shinichi apparently flirted with Nurzak by exaggerating his own nose. I don't know, but Nurzak became aroused and now the two of them are lovers. Very interesting. And maybe also a little bit strange. Anyhow though, since Shinichi is basically the leader of our mercy Scenarios. Our general, I suppose we could give him that title. I did feel that it would be nice for him to have his very own special bedroom with Nurzak, uh, since the two of them are lovers now, so we actually ended up digging out a section at the end of our residential area here in the western wing of the base, of course. Now, I felt that this would be good for morale as well, since Shinichi is going to be sleeping among the other mercenary troops, but also, of course, I do feel that he's earned it. For God's sake, we've had to replace several of his limbs with bionics. He has sacrificed a lot for the Empire. In my honest opinion, a nice bougie room and comfy little bed for he and his lady to sleep in at night is the very least that we could do for Shinichi. And now with that little mining project finally finished, I would choose our next research project, which is going to be aerial vehicles. Now, research into aerial vehicles will end up unlocking the Mosquito Helicopter and the Smuggler Airplane. Two vehicles that would be great for transporting weapons and other goods, as well as any of our troops above the ground, which as you could imagine is much more convenient than driving. Now, while we're still on the topic of vehicles, last episode I asked you guys to give me a name for the Wissent, Wysent, whatever. Now it is going to be named Shinichi's Pride. A very prideful name, <laughs> pardon my pun. No, but for real, I do feel that this is a wonderful name since it is the vehicle we use to carry all of our private army and Shinichi basically carries all of the private army as well on his back, metaphorically, as the leader. And of course, I can't forget that this wonderful name comes from our good friend Sleepless6558, who also states that this name reminds them of the game Kenshi, which I believe is a reference to, I think it's Ocran's Pride or something along those lines. I haven't watched anything about Kenshi in a long time. But of course, once again, thank you ever so much. And thank you to everyone who submitted the names, the comments for names. I really appreciate it. Now, sticking to the themes of things I asked you guys about last episode, I also asked who should end up getting the mech link that we received, so we're actually going to be giving this to Downs. Now, after doing so, a lifter mech actually fell from orbit and ended up landing right in one of our indoor growing zones, but this is interesting as well because this would suggest that there is some type of structure or even multiple structures that are orbiting the planet with hibernating mechanoids. Most likely, of course, from ancient times when the ancient 
ancient Thromboian civilizations flourished and were extremely technologically advanced. Now, of course, though, credit where credit is due, this wonderful suggestion came from our good friend Gabo Girl 713 who was also saying that this is a good idea because since Downs is our researcher, someone has to stay back and protect the base while she's here, of course, since she is incapable of violence. And who better to do so than our turrets and a little army of mechanoids. Now, with that being said, though, I did also see some other comments saying that I should give the mech link to somebody, build a small little uh, squad of mechs, essentially, and use them in battle. That may be something we end up doing later on as well, where we kind of keep downs out of the range of fire and whatnot, but we use the mechs to battle. I don't know. I'll, I'll see where that goes. As for right now, we have actually finally recruited Commando Jr. into the ranks of our mercenaries. Of course, first things first, we're going to allow him to equip different types of apparel, whatever he really likes, along with some light combat armor, and then we would also allow him to equip a longsword and a rifle. You know, I gotta say, we've done a lot of crazy things in this series thus far, but one of the craziest might be recruiting the child of a Mountain Devil Mafia Duke into our private army after we killed their father. I suppose time does heal all wounds, I'm just glad he could see things our way. We ended up finishing our extensive research into aerial vehicles, which was very nice. I might get around to building one of those here very shortly, but for the time being, I want to begin researching basic mech tech. Of course, there are quite a few reasons for this. One, we need a recharger for the lifter that we currently have, but also researching basic mech tech is going to allow us to create some basic mechs, such as a version of the scout mech that the ancient Thromboians used and our very own Militor, which is basically a shotgun mech, and I think that's the one that we're going to go with. Now, as we begin working on that research, actually, we ended up finishing up, as you can see here in the time lapse, but uh, we ended up loading up Shinichi's project as well as our unnamed mech suit because we once again plan on doing a teeny tiny bit of conquering out in the outlands against the mountain devils. Obviously, of course, it's going to be yet another milestone in our conquest against them, but I also think that this would be a good opportunity to try out our new mech. Before we actually go and begin our conquest once more, we're going to do a bit of trading here with the rebels. This is still the Gun Empire series, for God's sake, and we've barely sold any guns. In all seriousness, though, we actually ended up selling several weapons to them, and I really am trying to find a good balance between conquest and also selling a lot of weapons, of course, and I don't want to be jumping back and forth constantly throughout the videos like, oh, we just sold some guns, oh, also we're fighting here, so I'm trying to find a good balance because I don't want this to become the uh, Conquest Empire series, right? We, we still sell guns. Nevertheless, though, we would continue on our journey to the stronghold in the Outlands. Now, I will say something about trying to conquer the Outlands here that I guess I didn't expect early on was how difficult it was really to travel there, even with roads. Now, I do know that we basically just have a large dirt highway and things would go a lot smoother with some better roads, which I do plan on working on in the future. But even just with roads in general, uh, you know, I mean, it still takes a very long time to get over here. So I do think that good infrastructure structure is going to be key to this conquest, just as well as other forms and types of vehicles like aircraft. Uh, anyhow, though, we finally arrived at the Outland Stronghold here, and we would quickly park our vehicles inside, just ever so excited to finally see our comrades once more in person. With us, we actually brought several different types of resources, several different types of leathers and steel and things like that for uh, some different turrets, of course, as well as sandbags and anything else that they could really use for defensive purposes. Now look, of course, we set up the stronghold here to be somewhat self-sufficient, and they definitely could have obtained these resources on their own, but we already had a surplus of resources like leather and whatnot, as well as manpower, so might as well bring it. And truth be told, I really didn't bring all that many resources, at least not near as many as I thought. As you can see, I had decided to try and build all sorts of leather tents for all of our military members here that didn't have a place to stay, as the residential quarters at the stronghold were still extremely 
really small. I ended up having to build them some wooden canopies because we only had enough leather for like four tents. Oh well though, I suppose it was at least a teeny tiny bit better than sleeping out in the open where some enemies might be able to sneak up on us in our sleeping bags and stab us or who knows what. But now that we actually have a self-sufficient base here in the Outlands, I also want to begin forming some new colonies. Not exactly colonies that we're going to be running manually per se, but some that are actually going to be created by the Empire mod. Uh, what I like to think this is essentially is that we're hiring many people from the Outlands to join the Gun Empire and form these small colonies. At least that's my headcanon and lore for it. The icon for these settlements are a little bit goofy, but uh, they have guns on them, so I like it. For this first settlement, I actually went through and ended up building three buildings, the first of which was an ammunition mine, which makes sense to me because we would be making gunpowder and things like that there, but I didn't actually end up setting up any workers after we got it built because I had no idea how the mod worked at all. I did eventually watch a nice video by Newbert, who uh, has a very uh, comprehensive kind of guide to this, and it helped out a lot, but I watched it later on, unfortunately. Ah, you know what they say, you live and you learn. But anyhow, though, we are actually going to begin conquering yet another Mafia settlement right now. This was yet another of their minor settlements that is due southwest of the Stronghold, of course, in some small hills just by a river that actually runs right through the area. A more than perfect spot to begin dropping several bodies, if you ask me. Now, based on what we could tell from a distance with our surveillance technology, it did not appear that this settlement was all that well defended. They had a couple of simple turrets, maybe a mortar or something like that. Mostly the bulk of their defense here seemed to be all of their residents. Which was quite unfortunate for them, I must say, because their soldiers and residents, of course, are soft and fleshy and our bullets will pass right through them. And just as well, our artillery shells will crack their skulls and bones. As well as break their hearts and extinguish their ambitions for the future because, well, we're going to kill them all. As our barrage of mortar shells were raining down upon their heads, we would also bring in the armadillo as well as our nameless mech suit to do the exact same thing, but not from the air, mostly just from, you know, ground level, of course. And this was going splendidly. I mean, really, really well, of course. Now, I do know that this is a small settlement, but we were absolutely shredding them to pieces here. The rockets and massive main cannon on the mech suit were just insane. They were literally turning the impids here into atoms. Now, of course, because of this, the Mafia members here done the only rational thing that they really could, and that was to try and run away before the main cannon caught them in the back, and some of them did escape in the end, but you know what? That's fine. Let them go tell their friends what we have here. Let them tell their friends and family, and better yet, their superiors, that the SNR Rifle Company has a massive mech suit and that they are taking over the Outlands. For the MDM shall rule the Outlands no longer. The SNR Rifle Company and their Iron Fist will take over as the dominant power here. Before we ended up heading back to the Stronghold, we of course ended up raising that small settlement to the ground, as we don't exactly want to capture that one, we just want to bury that trash that they had built there so we could plant our own seeds in the future. Once all the ashes stop smoking and whatnot, of course. As our army is returning to the stronghold though, I realized that in our new settlement of Iveta, I actually built a barracks which was costing us negative 150 silver total in taxes, which was no good, so I ended up swapping it for an adult entertainment center. After that, we did finally return back at the stronghold, but we weren't going to stick around for too long, we just wanted to drop off some of the resources that we actually collected, some food, some weapons, and things like that, and then we're actually going to send the bulk of our private army all the way back to the headquarters. And of course this does mark the end to yet another successful capture and destruction of an MDM base. Score two for the boys back home. Now I do want to state that there is a reason I left all these weapons here at our second base. The reason of course being here in the Outlands there are several different tribes, smaller criminal organizations, and all kinds of different uh, factions that are willing to buy weapons from us. So not only does this second base give us a stronghold in the Outlands, but it also helps us reach numerous other customers that we couldn't before. Because of this new growth in the business and our successful military operation, Jed and Otto decided to kick back at the kitchen table and have a few sips of Am Brandy to celebrate. We still, of course, have a lot more territory to try and capture, but every victory is a step forward. As our main forces 
were actually headed home on the dirt road that we built, we noticed that there was a faction bombardment taking place. We thought this would be the perfect opportunity to collect some leftover weapons, so we stopped in. However, I will be the first to say that not only were we shocked, but we were absolutely mortified by what we saw after arriving. It would appear that the Marshal Service and the Confederacy of Bana, along with a few MDM soldiers, were battling. Among their ranks, the Marshals had several of their specialist class soldiers, as well as their infamous General Hawthorne, who was actually sporting two charge SMGs, a type of technology that we couldn't even begin to fathom how to create at this time, unfortunately. But not only was the General present, they actually had several mechanoid soldiers, or what I assume to be some type of martial tech dumb AI robot soldier? Look, whether it be a martial robot or a mech soldier, it was some type of bloodthirsty killing machine that had no mercy for its enemies. With that being said, I assume it's obvious, but needless to say, it didn't take them very long at all to mop the floor with the few tribal soldiers and MDM members that were actually there. Believe it or not, their makeshift weapons and whatnot were not all that effective against the marshals and their machines. Don't get me wrong, we don't like the MDM or the Confederacy of Bana at all, we couldn't care less if any of them die, but the absolute slaughter that occurred here from these machines was just devastating and gruesome. And it did indeed put a little bit of fear in us, I'm not going to lie. As well as the very distant and callous stares from General Hawthorne as we came in to grab as many weapons as we could before trying to run away. Sometimes I begin to ponder if maybe arming these two sides will come back to bite us in the ass, but I don't know. We are growing quite a bit ourselves, and I do believe that we're quite the force to be reckoned with, and after we end up taking over the Outlands, we very well may have our own powerhouse to fight back if need be. I mean, for God's sake, we already have nuclear bombs, something that we haven't seen either side develop. Speaking of developing, though, we're actually going to be developing a little bit more into our base. Just at the end of our residential area, I'm actually going to build a section for our mechanoids, not only recharging stations, but also a mechanoid area to gestate them, as well as build their chips and other required components, of course. Now, I will say, of course, I did intentionally actually put this near the residential area here in everyone's bedrooms, and the reason I did that if everyone's asleep and we have our mechs that aren't going throughout the base trying to guard everything, they're having to be recharged, I want to ensure that we're able to quickly bring them back to life, turn them on, and have them defend us, essentially. Not that we can't defend ourselves, of course, I just don't want to put them in some place that's very far away from everyone and something bad end up happening at some point. I always just want to try and make sure we have those added layers of protection. Now that we finally have the room created, as well as the required production areas and whatnot, I'm actually going to have Downs here go ahead and begin building our very first Militor. This handsome little lad's going to be gestating in this tank for, I think, about two to three days, something like that. It's almost like a little pregnancy, and he's just going to pop out at some point. Kinda gross, but anyhow. It was around about this time that I realized that in our settlement of Iveta, I actually needed to manually add workers to these different production areas like gun production and food production, which ended up making us a good bit of silver in taxes. Now, I would like to just solely do gun production, but doing so doesn't really get us as much money, unfortunately, so we're gonna be doing a little bit of farming, I suppose. Which, in my personal opinion, makes a lot of sense from a canon and lore standpoint as well, because the Outlands out here in the temperate forest biome are honestly very fertile for vegetation growth and crops and all that great stuff. Also, to kind of elaborate a little bit more, what I want to do out there in the Outlands with all those settlements and everything, you know, in case it wasn't uh, kind of obvious, and I'm sure it is, I want to take over the MDM's territory, right? I want to try and get them completely out. I want to eradicate them. I want to conquer them. And I actually want to implant all of our settlements using the Empire mod as we are now, that way we can actually create an empire, an actual empire. I've made so many of these series, uh, logging empire, mining empire, all these things, yet I've never used the Empire mod as I really should have, you know, for something like this it works perfectly. So that's kind of my game plan there, to just elaborate a little bit more. And of course that goes hand in hand with getting taxes, right? Every great empire collects taxes, and the more taxes that we get, the more, you know, 
know, silver that we're getting not only from our gun production here, but from those individual settlements that are actually selling guns and food as of right now as well. But of course, guns, right? We are a gun empire because of that. But of course, enough of me rambling. Sometime later, finally, the brunt of our military has returned home all of our private army back in our caring, loving arms once more with all of their guns and resources that they brought along with them, which we are going to promptly begin hauling in, of course. We were very, very happy to see their weary and tired faces, but their weary and tired faces were more than happy to see our recreation room, specifically our arcade machines, it would seem. I'm just glad they're happy and alive. Now that they're finally back home, we're actually going to create a new colony in the Outlands. We're going to hire a bunch of Outlanders to become our mercenary settlers and go out where the previous MDM settlement that we actually raised to the ground was and build a settlement for us, of course. Nothing too big or fancy. This one will actually be a bit smaller than our first one. The only thing I really ended up building here for the time being was another ammunition mine. That way we can start working on gunpowder and everything that we'll need to continue with our gun creation here. I would also begin putting workers into gun production and food production, just as I did with the other settlement as well. Really just trying to put a hyper focus here on silver tax as much as possible. Now, of course, I'm not all that worried about silver. We're making plenty of silver with our gun cells and everything that we've been doing with the marshals and the rebels. As you can see, we still have quite a decent sized stockpile, but as we continue to settle all throughout out the outlands we are going to start running into some money issues if we don't start getting our taxes up right now as the old saying goes you gotta spend money to make money baby Speaking of making money, we had yet another trade caravan from the Outlands. However, this was not Big Daddy and his gang, nor was it any tribe that we were aware of thus far. Though, as they continued approaching, I did realize that the entire caravan was made up of what appeared to be some impid tribes people. And then I remembered that I had heard of this tribe. It was actually very new. This tribe had actually been recently mentioned by our good friend Strip Kai or Key History. 4145, who actually stated that when the Impid Rebellion spread like wildfire, the slaves chose their leader, a former chieftain of one of the Impid tribes that was known as Impticus. And many of these escaped Impid slaves have formed this new tribe under his leadership, known as the Unchained. A very badass name for a very badass origin story that only took place very recently, as we saw a few episodes ago. Regardless, though, it would appear that they've arrived at our doorstep looking for some firearms to protect themselves. We're more than happy to oblige, of course. Scott himself would actually come out and greet the chieftain. The two of them shook hands and began discussing some business. We would end up selling them quite a few core weapons, and what I mean by that is basically from Vanilla Rimworld, some of the less expensive items that we knew that they could afford. Just as well, I ended up trying to buy a boomalope off of them. Unfortunately, I didn't realize, but this was not a boomalope. I wasn't paying attention, and I accidentally bought a toxalope. But unfortunately, I guess we're stuck with him now, so the only thing I could really do was give him a fitting name for his fitting origin story, I guess. I named him Mistake. He's a mistake, okay? Also, he might be a lady. I, I don't know. I did end up building him a nice little chain link fence lot here with a nice little metal bowl. That way we can throw him some scraps from our meals or something out there. I don't really care if he dies or if he is a she. You know, I I'm not worried about it. Meanwhile, back at the stronghold, I ended up replacing our dusty old simple turret by the garage door with that same turret and three more dusty old simple turrets. But notably, I did encase them in some sandstone embrasures and I ended up putting a few more sandbags around them for extra protection, so it should be a little bit better at the very least. I also ended up trying to set up some squads of soldiers through our empires and settlements tab and whatnot, and I got a little bit confused by it at one point because I'm still trying to learn some of this by myself because, I don't know, to me that's a lot of fun of course, because our 
settlements and empires overall are pretty small, I ended up having to go with a cheap soldier who just had a shirt, some pants, and a makeshift pistol, but it is a start. As we continue growing and upgrading these new settlements, we'll actually be able to afford more expensive colonists and soldiers who actually have better gear, but that'll be a little later on. Finally though, one of our non-organic soldiers was finished. Our first Militor, a little robot with a shotgun for a hand, was finally completed, and of course I'm going to go ahead and create another one in just a moment, which will take a little bit of time of course, but I want to uh, let you guys know I'm going to take some of your name suggestions for the mechs, uh, the lifter, two militors, uh, the settlements that we actually have. There's a lot of things that need to be named of course. But this handsome little stud fella is just roaming around the base defending it. He's on guard duty, it would appear, awaiting the call to action at any moment. One of the most important areas in the base that was in his jurisdiction to guard was our bank vault. And I wanted to mention as well, it was during this time that we actually had our first cycle of taxes billed to us. It wasn't all that much, of course. Like I mentioned, we're still extremely small. I think it might have been around about 500 silver, but that's only with two settlements. We will be growing that exponentially very quickly. And you may notice that I only said two settlements. Some of you probably understand why, but just in case you don't, the stronghold here doesn't actually pay taxes because it is a second colony. It's not actually a settlement through the Empire mod. But just because they don't pay taxes doesn't mean that they're totally useless in that regard, as being here in the stronghold in the Outlands, they can actually trade with actual traders like this, making more money. So a good comparison of this as well, as I mentioned earlier, we only got five silver from two of our small settlements while the stronghold here doing some trading can amass over a thousand per trade. But as they're making some quick silver off the outlander tribes and crime syndicates we are actually going to be working on some new parts for a new vehicle. This is going to be our very first aerial vehicle. It didn't take us very long to amass the amount of parts that we would need as we actually had quite a few from our raids and whatnot down in the outlands that were left over from different battles. Battles. We're actually going to be building the smuggler plane. I wanted to go with the mosquito helicopter, but the smuggler actually made a lot more sense since we're kind of smugglers who are selling guns. We're not really anymore. We're more of a massive military contractor thing for both sides, but you know what I mean. Of course, though, we got to take this bad boy out on a test flight, and I know exactly where I would like to go. I want to test its fuel efficiency just as well as how much cargo it can really carry. Is it really going to be all that great compared to our massive Shinichi's Pride truck. Of course, this would take a good bit of time, so we'll check back in in a moment. As for right now, we actually have both of our Militor mechs finished, giving Downs her own personal guard squad here of two mechs. I think they'll be perfect for protecting her when we're away from the base. She normally stays inside anyhow when a raid happens, uh, even if we are here, so she should be fine, of course. But if they were to break through, at least we have these two guys now. With that being said, we're loading up Commando Jr. and Richard into our smuggler airplane to give it its very first test run. We've also loaded up plenty of weapons as well as coal ore because we plan on doing a little bit of trading with the marshals. As we were flying over the Noquan Desert, Commando noted to Richard that he'd never thought that this place could look so beautiful, but from an aerial view, it was truly gorgeous. We ended up arriving at our first trade destination, we sold them a few weapons, plenty of coal, just basically anything we could, and we ended up buying I think a little bit of fuel from them maybe, maybe some components as well, just because they didn't have enough silver, and then we would actually move on to our stronghold. I wanted to travel to the stronghold for two reasons, to see if the smuggler was actually a viable option for going there and returning, you know, with a decent bit of fuel, and turns out it seems like it really is, but also there's going to be a little bit of a changing of the guards here. We are actually going to be leaving Commando Jr. here behind and taking Grefus back with us. Because Grefus has two prosthetic legs and two prosthetic arms, he's not really in any shape to be protecting the stronghold, of course, right in the hotbed of all this warfare. In doing this, we are also learning a lot about the smuggler as well, such as the fact that there can't be any chunks or vegetation as large as trees in the way of its landing strip, otherwise it can't land and it also can't take off. 
I realize this is kind of common sense, and honestly it is, but it is still something that I learned. We took off into the sky and began flying home immediately thereafter with our cargo, which we're actually going to stop at another Marshall settlement, as you'll see in a moment, and begin trading with them once again. I did learn some more valuable information, though. The smuggler is a quick and effective way to travel between the stronghold and our headquarters base. Of course, that doesn't mean that our trucks or anything are useless now, as the smuggler can only carry two passengers, so Shinichi's Pride is still going to be our main way of transporting our massive army around. But say we're in a quick pinch and we need to get Shinichi or somebody over there to try and help out at the stronghold, this would be a good way to do it. And as you can see from the massive piles of silver on the ground, it's also a very effective way of trading with some bases that are far off into the distance. Ah, look at all that money. Truly, we have obtained quite a bit of wealth, although we are going to be spending a good bit of it. As I said earlier, you have to spend money to make money, baby. And that still holds true 10 minutes later. I will also say I'm extremely I'm extremely excited to have Grefus back here at the main base, mostly because I didn't want him to die out there at the stronghold in some massive raid. But because of his condition, I'm not really sure what position to give him here at the headquarters. Maybe as a personal guard along with Down's mechs for her? I'm not really sure. Now that we've all seen that we have a massive stockpile of silver awaiting in the vault, I've decided that I want to spend some of it actually. I'm actually going to go through and upgrade both of the two settlements that we currently have. Uh, this will actually make them a bit larger. I believe maybe allow them to build some more buildings. Like I said, I'm still trying to learn as much as I can as I go because for me, that's a lot of fun. Looks like it's going to take a few days for that to be finally completed though. And in the meantime, while we're waiting on those two to be upgraded, I'm actually going to go ahead and settle a third area here that's not too far off from our current two bases that we've settled. Just furthering our iron grip and our influence here in the out lands against the MDM, as well as our income of taxes and profits from their gun cells and everything there. And truly, we do have quite the sphere of influence forming out here now. I just, you know, I know I touched on it earlier, but I just want to say I'm so excited that we are actually becoming an actual empire here on the planet. We have made a lot of progress, and I'm very, very proud. Funny enough, back at the stronghold, we actually had a group of travelers that were visiting the colony there, and they were actually from the SNR Rifle Company, some of our settlements nearby. I was a bit confused by this at first, but then I realized using the Empire's mod, these settlements are actually their own separate entity with their own trade caravans as well as visitors and things like that. Which is very cool and awesome, but also can be very scary because that does mean that they could also rebel against us, which we hope does not happen. At the moment though, we do however have more pressing issues, such as this fairly large raid that has just arrived outside the city limits of the stronghold. It would appear that the MDM has sent several of their remaining impid gang members in the area to try and plan out an attack on us. Of course, we do plan on stopping them into next week. However, it must be noted that many of these members do have some fairly heavy weaponry, such as triple rocket launchers and miniguns. Of course, obviously, these weapons are nothing that we haven't seen before, but I think every encounter thus far has been with our main private army to back us up. The stronghold doesn't have near as many soldiers, unfortunately. So we're gonna have to try and take this slow and cautiously. One of the best ways, of course, that we could do this is by using our artillery to try and fire what few shells we actually have at them, hoping to kill them and or damage them before they get to attack us. Unfortunately, our larger artillery though much faster than the singular smaller one was extremely inaccurate and in the end we had only managed to hit one of their soldiers. By nightfall we would begin moving the armadillo tank into position just in front of the garage door, opening the door so that it may fire out just as well we also had all of our soldiers stand behind the tank and walls to take cover. In an interesting turn of events, the two visitors that we actually had from our nearby territory were fighting alongside us. Unfortunately though this this did mean that they would get stomped into the ground themselves as they only had makeshift weapons and didn't take any cover. However, their sacrifice and bravery on the battlefield would give us just enough time to begin preparing the armadillo for firing just as well as preparing ourselves to kill the enemy. 
As they approached closer to the stronghold, we would unleash an absolute barrage of bullets and cannon fire upon them. The muzzle flash from our massive cannon on the armadillo, as well as all of our rifles lighting up the snowy night air. We would continue pushing back against the MDM soldiers. We would hold our ground here at the stronghold or die trying. We would not even give them a singular inch, not even a molecule of dust. And thanks to our efforts, several hours of battling later and they were finally fleeing our territory and we had a rose victorious from the battle. With extremely minimal damage to the base and our soldiers, I might add, the majority of our enemies had been slaughtered and or bled out there on the snowy cold battlefield, but we did have an impid here by the name of Dan with some pretty decent uh, melee and shooting stats, so we actually began tending to him so we could try and imprison him. Unfortunately, we had yet to set up a proper prison here just yet, so we would actually end up using our makeshift hospital and converting that into a temporary prison. It would still only be Dan for the time being. Dan here is actually unwaveringly loyal as well, so we're going to have to enslave him as we also don't have a brainwashing chair here just yet. But we may build one in the very near future, it's nothing too complicated. After that, I decided to have Commando Jr. and Otto collect the corpses of our fallen comrades from the battlefield. Normally, we only bury our own colonists, and even though these settlers were only hired recently to try and settle in the Outlands, I still felt an obligation. They did fight for the Gun Empire, after all. We simply wanted to do our best to give them a proper burial among our other fallen heroes. Now there's something interesting that I wanted to bring up that actually could have very much changed the tide of battle earlier, and I didn't get to mention it earlier as we were in the heat of said battle, of course, but the armadillo got stuck in the garage door for whatever reason, I couldn't get it out, and this was going on during the battle as well. If the MDM soldiers would have continued pushing forward and they still had their heavy artillery like their triple rocket launcher, they very well could have just came directly in the base and began blowing everything all to hell. And that's why I also double down on the notion that those two mercenary settler soldiers actually did save us here because they did distract the triple rocket launcher from even attacking us at the time. Things could have been very different, but I am very glad that that battle happened because it helped me make up my mind on something. You see, I've decided what we should do with our nuke. You see, not too far from the stronghold, there is a very large MDM base that they've actually been using as something of a forward operating base or a temporary headquarters for the time being. And you know, it just feels like it might be the perfect place to maybe drop a nuke or so. And so that's exactly what Shinichi here is going to be doing. He's going to fly the new smuggler airplane all the way to this base. And he is going to nuke the absolute hell out of them. No more hiding. It's time that they know who we really are. It's time that they all know who we really are, what we are capable of, and we plan on showing them. We are no longer playing around. This is not a game. This is war. Well, if that didn't get everyone's attention, I'm not really sure what would. Today, the world has changed forever. The planet of Degum will never be the same. Although, I suppose that was the case originally when we created the nuclear bomb in the first place. Things were never going to go back to how they were after that moment. Of course, though, if we didn't discover how to create them, someone else would have eventually, and better it be used by our hands in the first place than either the marshals or the rebels destroying the entire damn planet, no doubt. Sometimes I begin to wonder if we're the only force on the planet that is truly neutral in all these conflicts. I actually don't know if we could be considered neutral, seeing how we have our own little micro-war here with uh, the um, MDM as well as smaller criminal organizations that want to take us out and you know, obviously that stuff. But my friends, I want to thank you ever so much for watching today's episode, and uh, I'm gonna ramble on for a little moment. I know not everybody likes that, so I do apologize ahead of time, but uh, as the episode winds down to an end here, I do just want to express my gratitude once more to you guys for supporting me and supporting the series, and being so patient with this episode, of course. I want it to be quite a bit longer than the previous episodes, which are normally around about 30 to 33 minutes, and this one, I think, is pushing close to 
maybe about 50 minutes or so by the uh, by the end of my ranting talk here, my monologue at the end. Um, but truly, I just want to say thank you. I'm having a lot of fun in this series. I know normally with my series in the RKRU, the Rat Knight Rimworld universe that we created forever ago, that this one takes place in, we normally do about eight episodes, uh, something along those lines. But this one I could see going for many, many episodes, as long as everyone continues enjoying it and support continues forward, of course, which I have no doubt will be the case. And I really look forward to continuing this series with you guys in the future. Like I said, this is amazing. Amazing. I'm having a lot of fun with it. Of course, it's hard not to have a lot of fun when you're using well over a hundred mods. I think we're, I actually don't know. I know we're using a lot though. And of course, I want to remind you guys as well to be sure to leave plenty of names for our mechs. We now have the smuggler airplane that needs a name. We have the uh, actual mech suit that also needs a name. Uh, you know, I also need to paint those, of course, as well to give them a little bit more flair, a little more bougie, a little uh, character, if you will, of course. And I also want to remind you guys, please continue leaving comments and suggestions for things that you would also like to see if you have lore ideas. I've been trying to share a lot of your all's comments and stuff like that and implementing your lore ideas and stuff because I truly do love using the community's ideas and lore and just what they think about the planet and the, the war and everything like that that's going on, such as the Impid Tribal Leader that we saw in today's episode, which was an absolutely wonderful suggestion and it does seem like a very real realistic thing that may end up happening after a massive uprising, of course. But my friends, I am done rambling. I do apologize for this at the end. I just always want to express how grateful I am to you guys, of course, and just ask you guys for suggestions and ideas because this community, you guys, the audience, it's it's really wonderful. I do think that I have one of the best audiences and communities here on the platform, honestly. I love interacting with you guys, and I just love you guys in general. <laughs> but I love you guys ever so much. I hope you have enjoyed today's episode once again. I hope to see you in the next one. Goodbye.